Hi, welcome to the second and final instalment of the awesome adventures of Captain Spirit, part of my playthrough of Life is Strange 2. Here's what we discovered from the first instalment. Chris and his father Charles live in a fairly humble house on the edge of a wintry town called Beaver Creek. Dad is a former professional basketball player who was at his peak some 10 years ago back in 2005 when his team won the championships, but that was back in the good times. Since then, things have happened. Emily, the mother in the family, has died. We don't know how, whether it was something like a disease or an illness that they knew about and could prepare for her death, or whether it came as a sudden shock, maybe in an accident. Either way, that precipitated a decline. Charles had a job as a school basketball coach, but he got fired after being violent on more than one occasion towards students and for consuming alcohol on the premises. I am guessing the leaflet that Chris found in his father's wardrobe about alcohol addiction was the one that the school principal referred to in the letter that he sent to Charles, effectively dismissing him from his role. They moved house. This is another thing that happened. They fell behind on the mortgage payments on the old house by three months, presumably after Chris lost his job. He now works for the railroad and he doesn't like his job. He's disinterested. He's not invested in it at all. He brings home the company magazine, but it lies in pristine condition, unopened and unread on the coffee table. And it will stay there until he brings the next one home, I'm sure. Possibly even before they moved, I think the neighbours notice some changes in Charles. The Reynolds family, who Chris rang, are presumably either neighbours now or were neighbours in the old neighbourhood. Anyway, Mrs Reynolds sounded very concerned for Chris's welfare when he rang her. And I wondered whether Mrs Reynolds could be the friend who Emily's parents referred to in their letter to Charles when they said that they'd heard they'd been told he'd been in a bar brawl. It seems entirely possible that could be it. Alcohol is a real problem for Chris because his father just can't resist. He drinks a lot and it makes his dad both sad and angry. Added to the incident with the school students, there is the bruising on Chris's arm, which he sustained as a result of one of his father's fits of anger. Plus there is the damage to dad's bedroom door where he's punched it in another outburst. He is a strange mixture, the father. He has a quick temper. He ignores Chris much of the time. He passes his leisure hours watching basketball, living in the past, if you like, and drinking to forget his problems. In a normal situation, Chris, who's filling the gaps when it comes to household chores, like, you know, washing up some of the dishes or putting laundry uh, on to wash, or uh, taking out the recycling or taking out of date food out of the fridge and putting it in the bin or even preparing food for his father to stop him just drinking all day. Some of those chores in a normal situation would be unremarkable if they were just ways of earning extra pocket money or allowance. But knowing the precarious situation that Chris finds himself in, they take on a far darker and more sinister meaning. And I think Emily's parents have picked up on this. Their letter to Chris made it clear that they think he is incapable. He's struggling to look after Chris properly. He's in danger of neglecting him to the extent that they have virtually offered to adopt Chris, to take him off Charles's hands completely, ostensibly just to buy Charles some breathing time so that he can get himself sorted out. But I think the subtext here is that as far as Emily's parents are concerned, they'd be happy if Chris never returned to Charles's care. They'd feel better if that was the case. Charles obviously cares for Chris. His affection, though, is tinged with self-pity and there's this anger bubbling away below the surface about the way his life has turned out. He's bought the replacement console for Chris, you know, that you ask for from Santa. He goes along with the dark gun incident. He's appreciative of the mac and cheese that Chris makes him and brings to him while he's watching the game. All of that's very good. He, he's also looking into things like the hot dog man competition, which I presume he's going to try and sort of get Chris to enter, where, you know, if you'll cover them in mustard and all the rest. And he's looking at the comic convention. But... There is this feeling, looking around the house, 
that he's letting the everyday care of Chris fall between the cracks. The desolate fridge, the sparse shopping list and the items that were on it, the decor of the house, the snappy way he speaks to his son at times, the daily absence of proper involvement with his son on anything beyond a superficial level. It's a Saturday and all Dad's made it clear that he wants to do is watch the game and drink. Chris gets told, go and play. And Chris recognises this pattern because it's happened so many times. Dad drinks, Dad sleeps, the day is gone and he hates it. No hiking trips like he used to have when Mum was alive. No Christmas tree decorations in sight yet. They're still on a shelf in a box and yet we're well into the advent calendar. No Christmas tree despite Chris getting that pinky swear from his father, Charles. It's not going to happen today and Chris knows it. Chris, here is a boy who's lost his mother and he misses her so much. He thinks about her. He talks about her. He wants to remember her as when he puts one of her records on and spends time just lying there on the bed listening, lost in thought. He admires his father. He always has. But he knows that things have changed for the worse since his mum died. He sees the drinking. He hears the anger about their situation. He's been on the receiving end of his father's frustration physically. He has few friends and he doesn't seem to see them much since they moved home. So the whole premise of the game, The Awesome Adventures of Captain Spirit, is centred around how Chris has retreated into an imaginary world of good versus evil with him as the superhero. He sees everyday events as being part of that battle. It's as if he was powerless to prevent what happened to his mum her dying, his father's decline into this sort of helpless state. He's invented for himself instead an alternate universe where he is in control of everything, where bad things can't happen if he steps in as a superhero to prevent them, where good people aren't meant to die senselessly, as he says to his um, shark toy that attacked the figure on the carpet. So the interesting thing here is that unlike Alex in True Colours, Max and some would say Rachel as well to some degree in the original Life is Strange before the storm and Daniel here in Life is Strange 2, Chris has no superpower but he believes in his mind that he has. It's his way of coping with the mundane and sparse life that he has with his father. It's his escape his way of getting out to a happier, better place. Right, we have more exploring to do. I'd really love to know, find out how it was that Emily died. I'd also like to know what's hidden away in the rest of the house. We have the garage key, we have the car key. We still have the garage key and the car key because we didn't put the car key in the little trinket box uh, dish when dad told us to. We've had one time with the main story already in the form of the newspaper article talking about the unrest that's going on back home, uh, you know, the stuff that Daniel and Sean left behind. Will there be more? Chris has got a list of achievements to work through as well, which we've scratched. We haven't really looked back at. We need to go there because some of those may well tell us lots more. So let's go. Let's get into the second and final instalment of The Awesome Adventures of Captain Spirit. Right, here we go. Um, what I'm going to do is go back out through the door and start picking things off. Oh, he's putting clothes on. What a sensible idea. <laughs> and shoes. Yes, I'd forgotten you were in your socks with basketballs on. I don't think he's totally against basketball. It's just that these things can take on bad memories and connotations when they're associated with you know being ignored by a parent if they're into a particular thing it can become something that you don't like because they do so much and they prefer it to being with you outside it's cold and we're in it nice it's beautiful though isn't it I and mean, the sun's out it's a cheery saturday oh now in his list of things to do one of them was I can practice my target skills on those dangerous beer cans and we mentioned snowballs. Set up a range 
Nothing can escape the deadly aim of the beer hunter. De <laughs> the beer hunter. You're too young to know the connotation there, kids. Oh, I see. We're going pyramid. None of your cheap target ranges here. Isn't it fortunate that Daddy got through so many cans of beer? Oh, please let us throw the snowballs. Come on, come on. Yes! Oh, do you know what? I kind of want to miss deliberately the first time just to see what happens. Oh, nice. <laughs> Another one. Do it again. Um, what happens if we try and hit something else? Can I? Oh, it won't even let me aim that far. What if far I had course. real superpowers? I could protect oh. the whole town. I. That's a very interesting point. What if you had real superpowers? I'm going to go for the bottom row because that will knock the whole lot down. Oh, yes. Oh, spare. Now we've got a problem. Can I ricochet left beer can onto right beer can? <laughs> I don't think the game intended this to happen. Let's try it. Oh no, that was wild. That was nowhere near where I was aiming. Pick another snowball up. We're going to have to do this the hard way. Let's see if it works on the right hand beer can. It's a personal challenge now. Shush. Uh, go for it. Oh no, that went right down the middle. I so he's... Loser. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on. It's not over yet. Basically, the snowball's going slightly to the left of where you aim. So if I aim there correct it was too high <laughs> these cans must be protected by a force field everything's do you see what i mean everything in his mind is part of an adventure game aim a bit lower chris you'll get it Ooh. oh come off nice, it miss loser is it not going to let me get these last two cans i'm going to aim even lower oh hi that's interesting Ooh. Ooh. So it didn't kind of lock on to them until I was aiming pretty low down. I'll do that with the same with the left hand one then. It should work. There we go. It turned into a target. Uh, yes. Yes. Pow, boom, Mission accomplished. Recycle that. Absolutely. And the bins are away and it's suggesting that we've actually achieved something and we've saved something. The logo appears when a task is been completed. Yes. Big tick. All right, I'm worried about these tasks because this one, uh, I could play Mustard Party 2, but I need to unlock Dad's phone. I have no clue. I've thought about this. I just don't know. 2005 didn't work. That was the most obvious number that we've discovered. In fact, it's one of the only numbers we've discovered apart from phone numbers. It can't be a number from a letter or something like that, can it? Why is there a shovel there? Interesting. Oh, I see. Hmm, that snow looks super slippery. Yes. I can shovel it. It's a hazard. It's the sort of thing Captain Spirit should deal with to protect the population. We're shoveling snow, folks. I don't think that was one of his objectives. It should have been, really, shouldn't it? Don't you think? I just love the artwork. Look at it. It's just so... Extra bonus points and luck. Relaxing. And it's a game again, isn't it? He finds fun in things that he has to do. And his dad hasn't told him to do this. You know, he's just doing it. Partly because I think it's something that he feels should be done. And partly because he's bored. What else is there to do? You've got a feel for the kid, haven't you? We can't interact with the mailbox. We can interact with the mailbox. What is this? No way. Oh God. For family fun, come play with your gun. Clean Harry's Gun Range Holiday. Sale and show, December 20 to 21. All day, Saturday, Sunday. And there's an address and a website. And three smiling people proudly displaying their firearms. Yeah, he didn't have a lot to say about that, did he? And I think I can see why, really. Um, we should explore, is what we should do. I love the crumping sound his feet is making in the snow. Look, and he's leaving a little trail. Great. It's like this. Christmas forever out here. Yes, isn't it? It's always more exciting when it snows on the run up to Christmas, isn't it? It's so rare that you get snow on Christmas Day in this country anyway. 
proper snow, you know, not just a few flakes. I'm talking about two, three, four, five, six inches. Um, I can't wait to get a real pine tree this Christmas. Yeah. Like we used to with Mom. There we go. The sadness comes out. His breath is frosting. <gasps> that answers the question. The Reynolds are their current next door neighbours. I'm glad our neighbours look out for us. They treat us like family. Yeah, Mrs. Reynolds, I think, is my prime suspect for the person who is keeping contact with Emily's parents. It might not be. It could just be somebody who saw it in a newspaper or something that he'd been arrested for a DUI or whatever it was. And there's Snowman. Hello, Mr. Snowman. I can't find Snowman's are looking like this. No fair. No, we've got to build you up to full oh, capacity. Snowmancer. This is sad. You used to be a good enemy. Look at you now. How are you supposed to train me to fight Mandroid like that? What can we do? Because you know the one enemy we haven't seen in all this, and this is Mantroid, isn't it? It's this invisible enemy. The ultimate boss fight. Oh, nice work. <laughs> it looks the part. I particularly like the eyebrows. They're menacing. Snowman, so what can we do to it? Blow it up. How do we do that? Oh, he's going to try and use his superpowers. <laughs> oh dear. This backyard's too big for the both of us. Go for your spade. It, it's a bit Dalek as well with that um, sucker sticking out of his middle. Here we go again with the camera shake. I don't think it's going to... Did you see that? That, <laughs> that's like the bit in the office where the coat hanger, the coat stand moves. Do you remember that one? Have you watched it? The US office. Oh, that was so funny. Uh, yeah, we can't blow Snowmancer up. Interesting. And yet we're meant to. Let's carry on looking around. We have got car keys, haven't we? Let's jog to the car. The snow reminds me of the Great Ice Apocalypse War. Oh yes, who could forget that? I wonder if Dad will teach me how to drive. I don't know, and I'm a little concerned now that you've got the car keys. Oh, hello. It either wasn't I hope locked. Dad doesn't get in trouble because of me. Why, what's happened? BCSS Beaver Creek Social Services, November 29, 2016, dear Mr. Erickson. This is Dr. Tamara Foreman of Beaver Creek Social Services, BCSS. As a representative of the county's elementary school districts, we would appreciate if you could arrange to come in with your son, Chris Erickson, for a meeting on Monday afternoon at 2.15pm at our local office at 2775 Walter Street. If you have any questions, please call our office at... Sincerely, Tamara Foreman, MSW, BCSS. Interesting. Someone has contacted social services. Maybe the school, maybe a neighbour, maybe the grandparents directly. Oh, we have a power action for the spirit reveal. What I can we do? can't go to planet without finishing my costume. Oh, okay. Right, right, right. Let's. We've seen that bit. No, we don't need to do that. Let's put it down. I hope Dad doesn't get in trouble because of me. Yeah, uh, it's interesting that he's still defending his father. We haven't finished the costume. We haven't finished the costume because if we had, there'd be a tick. And there is no tick there. We've not finished the costume. We need to go into the garage, which is this building here. And we have the necessary key. Now, this is the second building in the game, so there ought to be something worth seeing in here. If that is... What made that noise? Oh, we've got wildlife. It's dark in here. Oh, there's the light switch. Oh, don't open the door. Chris, come back. Don't be scared. 
The, the, the controls are a tiny bit twitchy. I don't think it's me. It's possibly that I've been playing other games recently and it's slightly different. You only have to be pointing in very fractionally the wrong direction and it won't let you do what you need to do. What have we got here? We have a locked cabinet. All right. La, I'm gonna... la, la, la. Christmas rules, bring me the present. Yeah, you're exciting now, aren't you? You know you're getting your play box spray paint. Now I can colour Captain Spirit just uh, like my drawing. Finishing the thing off. Spray it. Wh what exactly are you spraying? Not yourself, by the way. Why did it go dark? What is going on? Okay. This is pretty cool. In his mind, he's completed the whole thing now. There's nothing can stop him. He is Captain Spirit. Very good. Meanwhile, back in the real world. So we've yes, got a tick there. I was going to say. To the rescue. Yeah, we've got another tick. I uh, haven't got a clue about the treasure. I'm not sure how we keep an eye on Mantroid and his supervillains. The the game I'm not sure about, and the Water Eater. I know there's no hot time to visit Mantroid's home planet for a change. How do we do that? How do we visit Mantroid's home planet? I don't know. Uh, oh, I was thinking that was I more like the a... ice giants are watching me, waiting. I bet they are. You see a workbench like that, full of tools, and you think instinctively you're going to be able to pick one up and do something with it, but no. Got me there, game. Well played. Got me there. So we have a binder. We have an old box with Emily's stuff marked on it. That's going to be interesting to look into. And we've got this cabinet, and I'm going to try the 2005 combination on this. Yes. Dad used a padlock, he wants to keep me out. Yeah. This is a four figure combination lock. I'm thinking he must have used dates that were of significance to him, and 2005 was the most important yeah. year in his life. <laughs> we're in. Unbelievable. Oh, there's so much in here. Here's the firecrackers. Thanks for storing my explosives, Chief. We found them. Uh, and I'm guessing... Now I'm ready to rock. Yeah, it's showing Sorry, now that we've got the firecrackers. I I think we can now uh, blow up Snowmancer. There's stuff here, and I'm going to read all of it. And we'll go back over to Emily's box and the binder in a moment. And also, I spotted something on a high shelf that looked like hiking boots. Uh, let's look at the grandparents' letter. Grandma and Grandpa were so nice. I wish we saw them more. Yeah, and I think there's, th there's a thing going on there, isn't there, Chris? I think Daddy is distancing himself from them. Dear Charles, thank you for your lovely note and flowers for Kristen's birthday. They always mean more coming from you. We miss you and would love to see how Chris is growing. Like you, we also still miss Emily every day, every hour and minute. And we know that grief is part of your life, so always know that we think of you often. We're always here for you, like we were, like you were there for us, forever. Please stay in touch and let's make plans to meet soon. Your family and always in our hearts and prayers. Love, Peter. Interesting. Interesting. So since that note, I wonder how much contact there has been between Charles and Emily's parents. Binder. Another binder. Oh! Answers to questions. Local woman killed in hit and run. Police are seeking witnesses to a fatal hit and run that occurred on December 16, 2014 at 7.15pm Tuesday night on Mantle Street and Asteroid Drive. The victim, identified as Emily Erickson, 28, 
of Beaver Creek, Oregon, was apparently walking from her stranded car when she was struck head-on by an unidentified speeding vehicle. She is survived by a husband and son who were not on the scene at the time. Captain Anderson says that the toll cameras may hold important clues. We're treating this as a case of vehicular homicide. Anybody with information regarding the incident should call the anonymous Beaver Creek police hotline at 555-CAPTURE. Emily, 28. And there she is. That was Emily. Okay. I wonder if you've ever seen that before, Chris. I wonder if you have. I think that's everything that's in here. You poor kid. That's a save point. Um, yeah, there were, were hiking boots. I thought it said hiking boots. Dad never threw away Mom's hiking boots. Good. Yeah, you shouldn't throw away memories, should you? Objects are good at bringing memories alive. Um, I'm going to go old box first because we're just working our way around. This is where Mom went to school before we came here. Okay. Uh, May 17, 2011, this is a while back. Dear Mrs. Emily Erickson, as principal of Blackwell Academy, this is Ray Wells. This is Ray Wells. I wanted to personally reach out and thank you for your continued support of our art programme to our prestigious school. We love displaying your work along with the long list of other alumni. She went to Blackwell Academy. She went to Blackwell Academy. We all have fond memories of you here, so thank you for thinking of us and we hope you'll come visit the campus soon and see how your contribution keeps our dream alive. Principal Ray Wells, Blackwell Academy, Arcadia Bay, Oregon. Best wishes, Wells. Hand signed at the bottom. After the secretary had typed it. Oh. I'm going to go to art school because of me. But she was already an amazing artist. Okay. Uh, no, no, no. Give me that box. I'm one. reading that letter. I'm going to go to art school because of me. But she was already an amazing artist. Yes. Eugene State College Art Department, Landis Hall, September 15, 2006. Dear Emily, we received your letter of withdrawal and resignation and first wanted to congratulate you on your forthcoming child. While we're truly happy for you and your family, we're also selfishly sorry to lose one of our most promising students and artists. Your unique work, uh, unique and witty illustrations have been well received on campus and in the school paper, so we expect to see more of your work with us and others. Hopefully when you're ready, you'll consider coming back to Eugene State to finish your art degree and further inspire us. If you have any questions, please contact us any time. Best wishes, Professor D. Jennings. Oh, Emily. Her dream of art college had to stop because she got pregnant. Oh, wow. I remember when Mom drew that and Dad couldn't stop laughing. Good night, good night, handsome. And then she steals all the quilt and he's freezing. And then she says, honey, you got a cold again. I told you to eat more fruits. <laughs> That's probably too true. I, I, do you know, I keep closing that and this there may be something more to see. Cool. There I is as well. I don't get this one. You don't? I'm too young. And then we've got hin, hin, hoo, hin, and then wah, and then wah, and isn't it your turn, Mr. Officer? And then... <laughs> okay. Yeah. I'm saying nothing. I'm glad you don't get that. You shouldn't. Mom and Dad always talked about how they met at school. Oh, this is nice. Neighbourhood Watch. The Jock and the Artist. Emily Wyatt and Charles Erickson. Eugene State College. They were at college together. 2005. Never judge two books by their covers is the motto of this odd couple from Eugene, each of whom is making local waves in their respective fields and why we're showcasing them in this week's Neighbourhood Watch. Emily Wyatt is a cartoonist whose witty work about her strange life has been featured in print and the web, even in the pages of this paper. She hates all sports, by her own claims, yet is engaged to Charles Erickson, a local basketball star, who some say is headed to the Oregon Ducks. Ironically, they met at the library and found true love among the book stacks while helping each other study for their torturous finals. I'm math and she's art. 
says a shy, blushing Charles, clearly a man in love. Which are actually the same thing from opposite sides, adds Emily with a warm smile, taking her new fiancé's hand. Interestingly, though, that's 2005, so it was the college championships that he won then. Maybe he was never a professional basketball player as such, you know, in terms of going mainline full stream into the professional world of it. Um, yeah. Oh, God, this gets more sad by the minute. So they met at college. They were really happy. She got pregnant. She dropped out. Dot, dot, dot. Well, Chris, I think you've just found out a lot about how you came to be. It's time to leave this room because there's nothing else to see. Turn the light off. Always cover your tracks. Open. We now have fireworks. I propose to return to the snowman, sir, and deal him a fatal blow. I say him, he could be a she, but snowman, sir. I don't know. Uh, I'm looking at you. Now the snowmancer is ready for battle. Oh yeah. Bring it on. Blow it up. Blow it up, Chris. I mean, this is not going to go down well. I hope, Dad. Now you are ready this. to battle with Captain Spirit. He just happened to have a lighter in his pocket and retire to a safe distance. Observers say they saw the snowman's head explode. Oh, well, a bit, anyway. Yes! That's got to be so mission cool. accomplished. No yes! almost froze the whole city until Captain Spirit melted him. For now. Yeah, I don't think winter's going away anytime soon. So we got a tick there. Um, we're on three now. Like, I, did you know that was that one I could not get to? Can you see that? I'm, I, ah, there it is. That's weird. I had to go across and down before I could go to it. I thought you'd be able to go for it from there, but you couldn't. So things we haven't done are this treasure, uh, this warning about keeping... Oh, I bet Mantroid's still hiding on his planet. With my full costume, I could use my spaceship and find him. We haven't done that. We haven't done the superhero team is strong. Keep an eye on him and his villains. Mustard Party 2 and the... There's five things we've still got to do. Um, while we're outside, somewhere we haven't been is over this side. Can we do anything with the sewing? Dad won't fix the swing because it's too dangerous to fix. Really? Okay, we can't do anything with it. I thought there might have been a superpower we could have used. How do we actually... There's a ladder. Thanks for answering my question. Behold, the flying fortress. I think we should go there because we haven't been. And it's inviting us to, so let's do it. I don't know that we're going to complete all the tasks here that, that Chris has on his list. I'm not even sure if I can because I still can't work out the code for the phone. Unless there's something up here. Right, there is a lot of stuff up here. There's a lot of stuff up here. Um, secret stash? I can't let Dad find my secret stash. Ever. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if he'd be able to climb that ladder that you were on, actually. It didn't look too strong. An adult might struggle. Here we go. Open sesame. I've been known to say that when I walk into shops. <laughs> you know, the ones with automatic doors? You walk up to them and go, open sesame. Well, I do. Sorry. Um, there's a load of stuff in here. Baseball cards. These are my favourite baseball players, even if I don't understand the stats. Now that's interesting, isn't it? This is baseball. Dad's not a baseball person. Dad is... it's just got names of them. I, I don't know if they're real. Um, Dad's a basketball player. Maybe he keeps his baseball cards up here because he doesn't want his dad to see them and be disappointed that he's into a different sport. Decoder. Maybe I can use this to read the map. Is that like uh, tissue paper so that you can see through it? Oh, we'll take it with us. Now That's... I can use this to reveal the full map to my next adventure. 
it is, look. It's translucent. And it's showing up in the top that we've actually just picked that up, which is great. Right. What's next? I loved watching Mom draw her comic. Oh, it's another one of Mum's drawings. What are you cooking me, my sweet Valentine? And he replies, your favourite dish. She says, pizza. He says, happy Valentine's Day, sweetheart. It's literally modelled on them, isn't it? And their life. School letters. Why are you keeping them here? Harry did say mean things about Dad. But I can't let him see this. Oh, this is why you're keeping things here. Um, do you know, I think I've got a little spider crawling on me. <laughs> Something's irritated me. Uh, let's read it. Dear Mr Erickson, he intercepted this letter. I wanted to let you know that your son Chris got into a small fight with my son Harry Sorber and his friends after school this week. Chris claimed they were saying inappropriate things about you, but Harry is not that kind of child and only knows you through me. As you might know, Harry is an honour student and a decorated Boy Scout. Maybe you should talk to Chris about his behaviour. If this bullying continues, I will be forced to speak to his school. Sincerely, Mr Brett Sorber. Ouch. This is my worst report card. Whoa. I'm doing better now. That's interesting. So, basically, this was 2015. Midterm report, Math B-, minus, Physical Education D, English C, History C+, plus, Elective Art, of course, A. Okay, that's it. There is no more to find in there. Um, good. Let's go back. I think we'll close that door. And we'll go counterclockwise, or clockwise rather, around this. So we'll go Sky Pirate. A fortress looks safe since we last talked. Um, Sky Pirate that he was talking to on Sky his walkie-talkie. What's the situation since your last report? Did the storm cause any damage? No, Captain. The magnetic field protected us from any harm. We're lucky to have you. Keep up your good work. Okay, we've talked to Sky Pirate. And we have a doll. Dad keeps telling me this is a girl's doll. So what? She's the Ice Queen. Gotcha. And then we've got Noctared. That's Noctarius' son. He looks like his dad. I mean, this is a great little place to hang out, isn't it? And we've got a bowl. I had to rescue my old cereal bowl after Dad used it for an ashtray. Oh, tray. man. Gross. Very gross. And we have a lookout from where we can sit. I think we've seen everything. I'm looking up as well because you never know if they've hung something from the roof. They have not. That's it. All the way around, we'll go and sit on the edge and look out perch yourself we've got that overlay for the map so my my intention is to return to the house now return to his room put the overlay on the map and see what it shows us after we've had a brief look at the wintry goodness yeah they really are on the edge of town aren't they there is no one around apart from them and the Reynolds by the looks of it mrs. Reynolds seemed concerned that she hadn't seen Chris play out do you remember she said um, like a normal boy or something like that. Okay, I was practicing sitting on the edge there, thinking that we had to go down that way, but of course the ladder's behind him over here. I couldn't see it. I found it. We're going down the ladder. I'm going to get back to your room and get the map put on the wall so we can see what it is we're meant to do next. There was a lot of stuff up there, but only really, I think, the map has helped us, or will help us. Oh, look. The Reynolds have got things up in their garden. They've got lights. Okay. Let's head back, Chris. Some of the things on his map are making sense, and some of them we haven't really connected with yet. The real-world locations and the sort of fictional ones that he's made up don't quite tally. Stamp those feet. Don't you bring that snow in. 
You really did spray the spray paint, didn't you? And Dad's asleep. We'll just go and confirm this before we head off to the room. Pretty sure he is, though. Um, we could put the car keys in the bowl now. We've been asked to do that. Yeah, we don't need them anymore. Let's just see. The game is finished. And Dad is comatose. Should we wake him up yet? Or should we... Do you know, let's not. Let's go and do this map. Now I'm guessing we put our overlay. Time for Captain Spear to put these pieces together. Okay, so we can move it, we can rotate it. Got it. All right. Um, hmm. Let's try some rotation. Mm. I have to place it right. Yeah, we do. We've got two. Let's try this. No, the distance between these two is too much. Oh, is that one up there? I'm so silly. That's one. There. Um, no, I'm not as silly as I thought I was. That shape there with the X should match on something with a map, shouldn't it? Is it this corner here? Is that it? No. Nope. The treasure map is not secret anymore. It's it was the mine. One. Okay, it was the number one. It just wasn't perfectly lined up the correct way around. Right, so the... It's in the maze of doom. Is that right? Is that that sort of junkyard area that we found? Yes, it must be, because there's the flying fortress. Okay. So, if we go back, we've got to go back outside again. Have they just come in? Suit up. Right, we're out. We're going to head into this junkyardy corner over here. It's just a pile of junk. That's not it. Hmm, interesting. I wonder where it is then. Uh, it's not going to let us go out here, is it? Game says no. So it's got to be somewhere within the perimeter. Yeah, I mean, there's a hard boundary, I think. It's where... not safe out there. Yeah. Yeah, Dad, I know. Yeah, I know too. There's a hole in the wall there. <laughs> What? Hmm. Looks like we had a visitor. Yes. Or as one sci-fi film said, uh, either something wanted to get in or something wanted to get out. Oh, is it over by the pond? No, I don't think it is. Oh, hello. Creepy tree. God, the lake demon is rising. It really does look like a sea it creature, doesn't it? Something with long spindly legs coming out of the the ground. I'm with you on that one. What I'm not sure about here is the location of this treasure. I would guess is this corner down here. It's like Christmas forever out here. Isn't it? The whole winter long, I suspect, where you live, it's going to be like, looking like that. It's got to be here somewhere. Oh, oh. Um, yes! It is here. Ooh, now I have the map to the Maze of Doom. Go in. Carefully, of course. Maze of Doom. We're in. Oh, look at this. I mean, he's created this, hasn't he? 
It's not by accident that it looks like this. It isn't very safe, I'd have to say. As they say, don't try this at home. Oh, I have no idea. We'll go right. It didn't look that big from the outside, did it? And maybe it's not. Perhaps it's just his imagination. Oh, it's a maze. It's actually a maze. You better look at that map again. Why? What did I do wrong? Can I actually see the map now? Oh, I can't see the map again now. <laughs> oh, no. You mean to tell me I needed to read the map? Um, all right. We'll go left. Give me an option. I'm going left. And it looks like I'm going left again. Don't tell me off, game. Don't tell me off. This time I go right. Well, if you really are lost, we're stuck. <laughs> you don't know where you're going. I don't know where you're going. I mean, I can press leave. We'll have to go back to the house and look at the map, I think. There was obviously a correct way to do this. And I didn't think there was, looking at the map. I thought we just got to solve the map. Exit. Darn it. On your feet, kid. Let's jog back to the house. We'll take another look at the map. Did you think that was necessary to read the map before we came away? I didn't. I literally thought just solving the pieces of the puzzle and locking it into place was enough. And then we just go find the treasure. I didn't realise there'd be an actual maze we had to go through. Right, head to your room. Don't mess about. Don't worry about waking Dad up. He's, he's in an alcohol-induced coma. The treasure map is not secret anymore. Oh, it's wait a minute. Mine. I was misreading the map, wasn't I? One is left. Two is right. Three is left. Four is left. So it's left, right, left, left. My mistake. Hey, I didn't say it was going to be a perfect run. It's a blind run. Yes, it's time to put those outdoor clothes on again. <laughs> so it's left, right, left, left. This time, this time, Chris. can't crawl any faster. I am, I'm trying to crawl at max speed. Right. He's only got one crawling speed. Left. And this had better work. <laughs> This should be it. Oh, it's looking positive. We're in a cutscene bit. Yes. Oh, thank heavens we've made it out. You see, it really wasn't that big. It's a TARDIS of a maze, isn't it? There we go. This could be the treasure then at the end of the... the map. Why have we pulled away to such a distance? I wonder what the treasure is. Oh, hello. It's literally a buried box. Oh, the treasure is photographs and mementos of his mum.
And isn't it strange? It's it's almost like his dad won't let him have these things scattered around the place because it's just too painful. Saturday's homework. Who's the boss? <laughs> so he does it by keeping them outdoors, buried in a secret location. And there are happier times with the three of them when he was a tot. Okay, you're streaking your makeup now, Captain Spirit. Oh my gosh. He'll have gathered those things together after his mum died. Almost so pretty. I miss mum's smile. And the only conversations he's having about this are basically with himself. So all the top row of challenges are done. None of the bottom row. Um, I have no idea how we do this. Do we go... I mean, we've done everything outdoors, haven't we now? There's nothing else flagging up saying you must do this, you must do this. Let's go indoors. We'll go back to his bedroom and see if there's anything interactable in there that we've missed. Because a lot of his superhero toys were in there, were they not? Um, I'm feeling so silly that I spent three attempts there to do that maze. But you know, what can you do? It's a blind playthrough. No cheating allowed. No looking up answers. <laughs> I'm assuming there are answers to be found because I honestly haven't got a clue about some of this stuff. Not a clue. I think, oh, wait a minute. Power Bear and Noctorious. Are you ready for the ultimate battle of good versus evil? I think I might be. Yes. We've just, we've just achieved another one. We have. We've ticked the bottom one off. Whoa now, that's an epic super battle. All right, okay. Uh, let's play it. Let's battle. You can't win this battle, Noctarius. It's already over, Power Bear. Great vocalization. Don't let Mantroid control you. Nobody controls me. Mantroid is my leader, and he wants you to die. <laughs> Give up now. We don't have to fight. You're not the boss of me, Power Bear. Um, let's ask Mantoid why. Mantoid is your boss now. Why did you join his team? The same reason you joined Captain Spirit's team. To win. Captain Spears helped the world over and over. Liar! Where were you and Captain Spirit when Mantroid saved my life? Huh? Good guy? Okay, this is like a, a battle of the minions, isn't it? The, the underlings, the henchmen. This, of course, is how action toys get scuffs and marks on them. Um, we're not going to apologise. Shut up! How many times do I have to stop you? Yes. Until you do stop me. Fight. I sensed that was coming, didn't you? Yeah, this is it. This is, they get scratched, isn't it? They get all these marks on them. Oh. Oh, my back. How? How did you do this? I can't move. Captain Spirit, Captain Spirit, please come to my aid. I can't defeat Noctarius on my own. I can't! Captain Spirit! Um, is he is he vengeful or is he benevolent? Let's be benevolent. Release him, Power Bear. Oh yeah, Captain Spirit's got your back, loser. He decided to spare you. That's a real hero. Now go back to your master. What if there was a... will get his revenge for me! Thank you for keeping me from the dark side, Captain. Okay. Well, we didn't get any additional completions for that. 
I honestly don't think we're going to get that one. I have no clue and I've been everywhere, I think. So it's obviously something we've missed, but it's something obtuse. It's I, I, I'm not saying I'm, you know, great at recognising these things, but I've come across no... Playtime all the time. Yeah, no numeric code which could be, I think, used to unlock that. Um, do you know what I think we do need to unlock? Dad. I think we need to go and wake him up. We've, we've been everywhere now. We've looked at everything in your room. Pretty sure there's nothing we missed. I mean, nothing on the ceiling, is there? Well, there is, actually. I hadn't noticed that. There's a, a mobile made of 3D planets, which is very good. I don't think there's anything we missed in Dad's room. Well, let's, let's go to Dad. Let's go to Dad. Uh, he did give us an option to look at him and wake him up. Oh, I hate seeing him like this. Yes, you've kind of said that already, I think. I mean, do we need another log on the fire? No, we're yeah, just going to get warm. Boom! It is the case, isn't it, that he was powerless to prevent his mother's death. We know this now, in the accident. And he likes to think that he now has power over everything in his life. Because it's scary when you realise you haven't, isn't it? I think that's what it is. That's my impression, that's my interpretation. Probably completely wrong. The game devs are going to tell me that I've just made that up with a knock because they won't... You know, I don't know them. They don't know me. Wake up, Dad. Dad, you, you sleeping? Yep. Oh, yeah. Oh, hey, yes. Wake up. Dad, come on. Huh? What? Who's there? Who's that? Dad. Oh, it's, he's it's well just me. drunk. Chris. Whoa, whoa. Hold on, buddy, okay? Jesus. Well, it's not a great uh, thing Dad! to see when your parent passes out on the floor. Uh, fuck! Dad, are you okay? Does he look Do it? Do I look okay? I just said that. No, <laughs> I tripped. Can't even watch one goddamn game. That's it. Shout at the person who's trying to help you. Fuck! Oh, this is going from bad That's to worse. just great. Oh, I think I sprained my foot. Shit. Chris, why did you wake me up? You, you told really? me to wake you up. I thought, I thought you said the pine tree. <sighs> pine tree? Yeah, the pine tree. I can't tree. even walk in my own house, man. You should be careful when you're drunk. That's you a skunk. know, when you wake up. Don't be a smartass, Chris. I'm not in the mood right now. Yeah, Dad. Okay. But well, that's a learned behaviour, isn't it? Christ, who is that? When daddy's like this, you don't push your luck. Go answer. If it's some salesperson or some church group, you just close the door on them. It's nobody's business. This is our castle, and it's our family. Right? Right. Hey, yeah. This isn't going to be good, is it? Is that Mrs. Reynolds? You look like you could be Mrs. Reynolds. It's not. Oh my, look at you. It is Mrs. Reynolds. What kind of costume is that? I'm Captain Spirit. Of course you are. We need all the superheroes we can get. That's true. And how are you doing, Chris? Good, Mrs. Reynolds. Kindly old lady. Just... just... Just? Uh, what's he going to say? Uh, he has been cleaning the house. Just, you know, cleaning up the house and stuff. On a beautiful Saturday like this, you should be playing instead. I even saw you clearing the snow out of the alley, there so we I go. hope you don't work all day. She's been watching. Well, it's laundry day. Dad's watching the game. 
So... He's trying to close the door on her, that isn't he? That explains all the beer cans. And she's got her foot in the Actually, doorway. Actually, I, I was going for a nice walk, but it sounded like the 4th of July over she here. She heard all the noise. Okay? Um... Do you know what, Chris? I honestly think it's time to be truthful here. Oh, yeah. Dad just tripped and fell. But he's okay. Sounds like he tripped over a whole bunch of beer cans. She's not right? stupid. Okay, Chris. I think I've heard enough. I'm going to talk to Stephen about this. And we'll be back to chat with your father. Wait. You don't... Please. Listen, I'm not trying to hurt you, okay? It's quite the opposite. We want to help. You're not in trouble. You haven't done anything. Just stay put, and we'll come by in a little bit. Yeah, I mean, that's the classic case of a child who's frightened that what he's got left is going to be taken away. And also who blames so what himself. what did that nosy bitch want? Ooh, nothing. Easy. Oh, nothing, huh? I was listening. I heard it all. You could have gotten rid of her. I tried. <sighs> Man, well, I bet you want to tell her. What a shitty dad you have. Huh? No, she just wanted to say hi. I didn't say anything, Dad. Oh, not I again. swear. Dad, please believe me. Jesus, stop that whining. You're not a baby anymore. Oh, boo-hoo, Daddy. Believe me. He's an unpleasant man. Grow up. But I... You're just... Just like your mom. Every time I look at you, I tell me you talk. Stop it. I, just, I see your face. Why? And if it wasn't for you, she would have never... Taking the car that oh, day. Oh, you're gonna load it onto Never. the kid? Oh, hey, Chris, look, hey, I didn't mean that, buddy. Oh, I think he's a little late yes. for that. Yes, you did! No, listen, Chris! Yeah, I think that is the point at which you just. lost your son. He's going to retreat to his little tree house. So I think he did the right thing there. I bet you think the same. His temptation's been to gloss over it and hide it because, you know, it would mean a big change. Oh my God. What the heck? Don't tell me he has got superpowers after all of this. No. Is that it? Was that the twist? Oh my God. The kid should have broken his neck falling out of the tree house and he didn't. Oh my God. Oh, <laughs> no. That was the twist. Daniel saved him. <laughs> to be continued. All right, well, I guess that is the end of the awesome adventures of Captain Spirit. Um, so I'll be back with you in a second. So I just want to say I thoroughly enjoyed the awesome adventures of Captain Spirit, first off, both as a standalone activity and also because I appreciated the tie-ins with the main Life is Strange 2 storyline going forwards. It was very cleverly done. I'm sad that I didn't complete all the awesome adventures on Chris's sheet. I did try and we got most of them. I think there were two or three that went uncompleted. One of them was that blooming mobile phone of his father's, which I did not find the unlock code for. It has to be somewhere. Um, the other activities that I didn't complete as well, I think it's all down to incomplete environmental exploration on my part. And boy, I thought I was being thorough. So I'm now torn between Googling to find out what the unlock code was and where it was that I missed it 
and not Googling because I know I'm going to play this game again. And it's a lesson to me to be more conscientious next time and leave no stone unturned. And I think I'll probably err towards the latter of those two options. So based on the ending that happened, the choice that we make when Chris was talking to Mrs. Reynolds, I have been playing the what happened next game in my head. And here's what I think happened next. Mrs. Reynolds and Stephen would have probably entered the house and would have seen the state of it and the state of Charles and the, you know, the damage that had been done. And they would have contacted social services urgently and they would have attended, I think, straight away because they already had concerns about Chris from that letter that he found. Chris would have been removed from that situation very quickly into their care for a time, a short time, I think, but ultimately would have ended up living with Emily's parents, his maternal grandparents. They've already said that they were willing to do this and, you know, it was what they wanted in their hearts to be able to care for him. Uh, and just an aside, talking about Emily, how tragic it was that she died you know, in that particular way. I did speculate it was either a gradual death or a sudden death. Obviously, it had to be one of the two. But in a hit and run accident, you know, it, it's awful. Um, but how brilliant it was that Emily attended Blackwell Academy. Uh, it was really great to see that and to hear from Ray Wells again in that letter. Back, back to Chris. Growing up in his grandparents' home, I think would probably be better for Chris for the foreseeable. He would be having a much healthier life with people who cared properly for him, who loved him really. And he'd be able to speak about his mother and celebrate her memory in the company of people who loved her too and who also weren't afraid to keep her memory alive and have photographs on display and be reminded of her constantly and the love that they felt for each other, rather than these things be hidden away in boxes, um, you know, like Chris had done with his maze and the treasure at the end of it, which were things that he had to keep hidden from his father because they would, you know, if he kept them lying around and was always looking at them, it would just make his father angry. And that's very sad. Maybe in time, Charles would have been granted supervised access to Chris. Uh, that's assuming two things that one, Charles ever wanted to have any access to Chris in the future, given what he, the nasty things he'd said about him and also assuming that Chris was willing to give his father a second chance. Neither of those two things are a given. Who knows? I found Chris's choice, making Chris's choice of what to say to Mrs Reynolds, quite easy. Uh, but nevertheless, for the character of Chris, it was a very brave choice to tell Mrs Reynolds the truth, because I think he probably suspected his father would be angry. And as I suggested earlier, in Chris's mind, his father was all he got left. And it might not have been brilliant, but Chris might even have been scared thinking, well, what's going to happen to me and my the home where I live? What will happen? Where will I go? And what will happen to my father? Because we know he still deep down loved his father and had admiration for him. But I think also that Chris had reached a point where maybe because of his father's latest drunken self-pitying episode, he wanted to tell someone. He wanted someone else to share the burden that he was carrying. And I think Mrs Reynolds also was a smart cookie. She kind of suspected or wasn't well in their house and the latest set of loud noises coming from it tipped her over the edge. She was not going to let it pass uninvestigated. It would have been interesting to know what would have happened had Chris lied to her rather than told her the truth about dad has just fallen over, whether she would have pressed it and insisted on entering the house to, to see for herself what was going on. Going back to Emily, the whole story of what happened to her, the sudden unexpected death, and then the falling apart of Charles as a father, the neglect of Chris, is a tragedy. It was very well written, very well told, given that we only actually met three characters in the bodies of Chris, his father Charles and Mrs Reynolds. And the entire story took place around the Ericsson's home. It was a very compressed location. It was all about uncovering clues. And I love that sort of thing. I mean, this is why I like the Life is Strange whole franchise. It's because it pushes this at you as a, as a game mechanism, that this is how the game works, how it unfolds. 
not one but two twists at the end of the game too i honestly thought that chris had developed a superpower as the result of his sh the shock he had of his father blaming him as he did for emily's death of calling him out as well for being this unwanted living reminder of her in the way that he spoke and looked but then twist number two there are daniel and sean so daniel intervened to save chris is this going to actually happen now when we return to Life is Strange 2, but from Daniel's point of view? I suspect it might. Uh, the game already said in the end credits, Chris will return in Life is Strange 2. So we are going to see Chris. I guess it means that then. I guess that will happen. It's an indication too, I think, of the fact that Chris has just uh, been saved by Daniel that Daniel is going to learn to use his power for good. And this, I think, might be because Sean's taught him to think that way. Um, I'm, I'm reminded back in the game where Power Bear was wrestling with his foe and uh, at the end of the battle, he thanked Captain Spirit for turning him away from the dark side. And it made me think, is this a bit of foreshadowing here? Is this what Sean is going to have to try to do with Daniel to turn him away from the dark side of using his powers destructively? I have so many questions and I've got a bunch of theories running around my head now going back to Life is Strange 2. I cannot wait to return to the main storyline. I hope you enjoyed watching The Awesome Adventures of Captain Spirit. I had a blast playing it. And I'll be back with you when we return to Life is Strange 2 and the main story. See you soon. Bye.